You ready? Ryan, what if I got a puke? <laughs> Dave, if we were at the lodge in July, we would be fly fishing. Yeah. But since it's winter, there is only one way to do this, and that's ice fishing. Seriously? Yeah. Dude, dude, Burley, what are you f***ing doing? I'm flooring it. <laughs> <laughs> we're on the ice, Davey. How thick is it? Oh, stay away from that thing, Burley. Not losing. It's OK. Oh, Jesus Christ. As it turns out, this is Lake Mivat. And aside from probably being my watery grave, it's known as the best spot in Iceland to catch Arctic char during ice fishing season from November through April, when the ice is apparently thick enough to drive a Land Rover on. No, no, don't strap yourself in, because if you go down, you got to loose that up. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you kidding me, man? Thankfully, we survived. But whether or not we catch any fish would be up to Verley's longtime fishing buddy, Gilvi Yngvison. Gilvi, nice to meet you. Now look, this isn't your typical Midwestern ice fishing. This is net fishing. I am going to put a net down uh, and lay it under the ice. Instead of dropping your line into a hole, you drop a specially rigged board that pulls your net under the ice along 25 meters of rope. One, then you go two. find your board and you drill a second hole. And you've got a net forming a wall under the ice. With a little luck, the fish start biting or getting stuck. Early, I'll stay right here. Good, I got the pick. It's like an Icelandic stripper pole. I'm not gonna say what happens on top. Ice fishing. So far, it's been a lot of ice and not a lot of fishing. I'm already numb from the knees down. We don't even have a line in the water. Tiny little more left. Yeah, yeah, just one more step to the left. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> this is the spot. Yeah, this right there. The that's very impressive, David. I know, very impressive. Wow. <laughs> Woo! All right. Once you drill the hole, you have to dig away all the ice and retrieve the board. Oh, you, you thought we were fishing? Nope, still not fishing. David, you're doing it like a little girl, well, man. I don't, I'm Put some about back it into it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a special trick to catch. Okay, it. he's gonna show us a special trick. I hope it's more special than your trick. It's like watching bread mold. How's your back feel? Good? There, it all slid down again. Why don't you just use your hands, Ruth? Dude, I'm trying to see if I can see it. I don't see you, David. This is a sign that I'm a true friend because normally I would just. Oh no, man. Yeah. So we're gonna pull this thing out. Yeah. In Wisconsin, waiting for a fish involves beer. Here, all you can do is pace around the lake and hope your extremities don't freeze. Pull this? Yeah. You can feel it moving. Yeah. And now you will just pull till you get some fish. All right. Finally, some fish. And that fish is Arctic char, the northernmost freshwater fish species in the world, able to survive insanely cold conditions on whatever scarce food it can find. Kind of perfect for Iceland if you think about it. I have to show you how we do it in Iceland. We get the hat out of it, break the neck. Wow, okay. Net fishing, exactly the type of brilliant, traditional cold weather ingenuity you'd expect from Icelanders. Break the neck. Except they stole it from the Canadians around 1915. I hear their maple syrup's pretty good too. You murdered him, David. It's like he oh, did he something to off. you. <laughs> <laughs> We've got our fish and it's time to eat. So we're heading to Verley's hunting cabin in the nearby mountains to cook and spend the night. It's a mile from the nearest road, so when in Iceland, you ready? Ryan, what if I got a puke? <laughs> awesome scenery. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah. Welcome, Dave. To what? This is your mountain kitchen, David. My mountain kitchen? Yeah, and it's haunted. Why, because you cooked in it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> How do you like the place? It's uh, definitely cozy. You see that little stove there? Yeah. It's perfect. Why don't you go outside and clean the fish, and then I'll take care of the prep and the vegetables and everything in here, okay? Okay, so yes, chef. I better do a good job. Throw me outside, my frozen fingers, but I'm gonna do a good job. He's gonna be proud when I'm done. Bertie, you go and do the fish. 
Yeah, it was a pleasure having you in Iceland. Thank you. You can put it right here. Nicely done, huh? Considering the conditions, yeah, I'll give you that one. <laughs> Thank you. With fish this fresh, you don't have to do much. Just add a little spice, herb-infused butter, and lemon. Because you can't trek into the Icelandic wilderness without herb-infused butter. What are we, cavemen? Do you think that we should open a little mountain restaurant? Yeah, I think you stressed the word little. <laughs> it would come from miles around because there's nothing else close. <laughs> Almost ready? Good. That's the sound you want. Wow, that is beautiful. This is pretty good. You know I love adventures like this. It's like you're working kind of hard on the snowmobiles and it's tiring and eating a fish right out of the pan and just like souping up all the butter that it's cooked in. Yeah, doing the things that we hate, you know? <laughs> Where are we going to be next time? Somewhere a hell of a lot warmer than here. <laughs> Fiji. Bora Bora. Mallorca. My, no, not Mallorca. Not Mallorca? No. I don't know, someplace warm. Okay. You did an okay job on butchering the fish. <laughs>